So Astra Militarum and World Eaters are efficiently announced. Let's talk about Games Workshop's Codex Roadmap for Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd just do a quick video talking around Games Workshop's Codex Roadmap. Over the past few months, the releases have slowed down a little bit. They have been a little bit less forthcoming with exactly which order the books are coming next. We've just had Chaos Demons releasing in summer, as you can see here. It does seem to be confirmed that the next codex is indeed the Leagues of Votan. We know that they were coming from the launch box, and it seems that their book's going to be dropping sometime in autumn. Then it seems that there's actually a rather long gap, and the next codexes aren't out till winter. And the only ones that are announced for winter so far are the Imperial Guard and the World Eaters. Both books that we knew were coming next, and kind of interesting that the Codex model is slowing down a fair bit. Most of the armies have their 9th edition releases, but the ones that are coming out all look like they're going to be coming alongside massive waves of miniatures. It is kind of interesting that as per this map, it does look like the 40k updates are going to be slowing down a fair bit. Throughout most of 9th edition, they've typically been keeping something like one coming every couple of months. Occasionally we've had some codexes really stack up, like when they released basically three codexes in January and then Eldari in early February. And now it looks like we're only going to be getting one or two per season of the year. I'm certainly not saying that it doesn't make sense. We have had the vast majority of codexes have their release in 9th edition. So unless they're going to do something else like a Psychic Awakening type supplement series, then the last few codexes are going to be eked out a bit. And I guess it only really makes sense to update the codexes when they have new models to add into them. Supposedly rumoured after these guys might be Space Marines with a few more models there. I guess it does mean that the pace of the 40k releases might well be slowing down a bit, but actually when they get to the releases they are going to be something interesting. At the moment it doesn't look like there's any hint of a standalone campaign series. My guess is that their idea of a campaign for 9th edition has been these Warzone books that have been releasing throughout. Rather than stacking all of the perhaps slightly disappointing supplemental content towards the end of the edition like they did with Psychic Awakening, it sounds like they've rather chosen to mix and match the codexes and the supplement releases throughout the whole thing. This timeline does say 2022 to 2023 as well, so it sounds like the winter codexes almost certainly will be coming in 2023, not 2022. So I'd be guessing that the World Eaters and the Astra Militarum will be somewhere between January and March. There still could be something like half a year to wait for those ones. There have certainly been rumours of 10th edition in 2023 as well. It might mean that these books don't have all that long before the edition changes, though I would guess if they are releasing them this late in night, it might well mean that we're not getting any sort of hard reset and they would be functional in 10th edition too. Going through them individually, the Leagues of Votam we know are going to be coming very soon. They just announced that the launch box is going to be released in September, but my guess is that this codex announcement is actually not to do with that. The picture isn't of the limited edition codex that you get in the launch box. This one's the standalone one, and usually that doesn't follow the launch box immediately. That's often been somewhere like two to four weeks down the line, or occasionally even longer than that. Even the launch box could just be pre-ordering in September with shipping in October. That has been done before by them. And I'd guess that that big box will be the first thing that people can buy just releasing alone, and then the codex will follow with a bunch of the kits released individually. Certainly the Votan release hasn't made some people happy that they're getting a release before the Guard. I feel like the logical order would have been to get the Guard redone before you release new factions. My guess is that perhaps they wanted a space between Leagues of Votan and World Eaters rather than releasing two standalone codexes that we haven't seen before back to back. According to their preview, we've now seen the full range of Votan kits that are going to be available. The launch box has the Carl Champion, two Hearthkin Warrior sets and the Hernkin plus the limited edition codex. For HQs we've got the Psyker Grimnir, the Brockir Engineer, the Carl that can build the special character, and the Ironhair Champion. Squads wise we've got those Chthonian Berserks, the Hearthkin, Hernkin, Hearthguard and Thunderkin. And for vehicles we've got the Sagittor sort of Razorback and the Hexon Land Fortress, what appears to be the equivalent of a Votan Land Raider. I guess after the launch box is done we'll also get a Combat Patrol box at some stage, so at least some way to get these at a moderate discount. As with Games Workshop's big releases, they often tend to be a bit staggered. My guess is that we won't get all these kits dropping on the release date for the Codex, and some of them will have to wait till a bit later. For example, the Chaos Space Marine players have been waiting a good few weeks to get their hands on the Possessed. My guess is we'll get a decent wave of kits with the Codex release, and then some of the more specialist units dropping a little bit on the later side over the next month or two. Moving on to the Guard, it is kind of nice to have their Codex officially announced. I'll be honest, it is a bit on the later side compared with what I was expecting. I really was guessing that they'd get round to them in 2022 and not have them delayed till potentially next year. 
In theory, winter means anywhere between January or March, and I would guess in 2023, maybe a January release if I had to put money on it. January often seems to be a fairly busy month for Games Workshop releases. That's where I'd be looking if I were a guard player. Again, it is interesting that each one of these new codexes announced is going to be having a pretty huge wave of kits come out with them. We've already seen or had heavily rumoured that there's lots of kits coming for the guard. There's the new Creed, a new Commissar and a new Cadian Command Squad. The new Snazzy Sentinels that we've seen. This Rogal Dawn battle tank that's been heavily rumoured. And then some new infantry kit, new Kazakin as a kill team, new heavy weapons and rough riders. Guard really have had a tough time of it basically all through 9th edition, despite gaining multiple decent balance things such as Hammer of the Emperor and Armour of Contempt on their vehicles, they still seem to be lagging behind. They are perhaps an army that needs an actual decent codex rewrite rather than a whole load of band-aid fixes. We'll hopefully be talking about some guard rules rumours later in the day today, so feel free to subscribe or check back later if you want to see that. Kazakin, I'd guess, are probably going to be coming as a release earlier than the guard codex and probably coming in a kill team box. That seemed like it was very likely based on the bases that they showed with them. They matched the one on the Space Hulk terrain that we saw on the Imperial Navy. In general though, having a codex this late really isn't that nice for guard players. I guess someone's always got to be last, but it does seem a little bit on the mean side that they're quite so long later after even Demons. It sounds like at this rate they're going to be the last codex of 9th edition by at least a good 5 months. With rumours of 10th edition on the horizon, it might well be that around 80% of 9th edition has passed by the time they actually get their book for it, which I don't think will please many guard players. I'd guess though if 10th edition does release in the not too distant future after it, the book would still be usable and it would still be a fairly recent update, so it would still likely be playable and fun in the new edition if it comes. Finally we've got the World Eaters, again coming in winter, again could be as late as March. Until then, if you're a World Eaters player, it's the World Eaters Index plus Codex Chaos Marines, though it really is a bad time to be collecting them as they have quite a lot of Chaos Marine models on offer at the moment, but there isn't really any definite confirmation as to what bits you're actually going to be able to use in the new Codex, there's a very good chance they'll lose access to a lot of the generic Chaos Space Marine datasheets, things like Havocs and Obliterators for example. I guess if you did want to paint up a few things in preparation for their coming, a few of the more generic things that could be useful regardless might be handy. Maybe you could get a rhino or two painted up to deliver berserkers to the front. I'd guess they probably will be able to access the possessed models the same way that the Death Guard can. And maybe some other bits like the generic demon engines or some cultist chaff might not be the worst thing to do. It just doesn't really make sense to be mass producing corn berserkers when we know that this rather nice new kit is coming, as we talked about in the last video. I think it certainly has potential that they were announced side by side by Guard in this preview. It could well mean that we get a fun versus box, perhaps similar to the Eldritch Omens one of Eldar versus Chaos Marines. Games Workshop does seem to like doing their Christmas Day previews for a big exciting versus box coming, and a World Eaters versus Guard one sounds like it would fit quite well. You could perhaps have the Guard be the initial release alongside the box, and then have it as your first chance to get things like some of the new World Eaters Corn Berserkers sculpts, and release the World Eaters Codex not too long after. If that one turns out to be one of their Christmas Day type previews, then I guess you heard it here first. Otherwise, again, as a faction that really hasn't had its own book as a support for basically the entirety of 40k, it is going to have a massive wave of releases. The lovely new Corn Berserkers and Angron have both been shown off. Both of those seem to have gone down really well. I think they've done great with them. Otherwise, to my mind, pretty much guaranteed releases will be some Red Butcher's Terminators, some unique cultists of some sort to mirror things like Zangor's, multiple very violent characters of one sort or another, and a new combat patrol box for the new faction. I'd guess as well that they probably will have at least some sort of corn demon engines to go alongside that. I think something similar to a Forge World Blood Slaughterer might go down okay. If they get a similar treatment to the Death Guard, it's possible that they might get multiple ones. Overall, I think it's going to be a pretty popular release, particularly Angron. I'm sure that lots of people will be looking to pick him up. The other Primarchs sold incredibly well from Games Workshop apparently. Really quite cool to have one of the main archetypes of 40k dug into that bit more. And it would just leave Emperor's Children as the God Legions not to be redone. It seems pretty much inevitable that Fulgrim alongside them are going to be coming back at some stage. I'd guess that they're almost certainly going to be a good few years off yet though. Maybe a late 10th edition project or a launch faction for 11th potentially. So anyway, good to have a little bit of direction, and it's kind of interesting just how much of an idea we have about all these factions. It does look like 40k releases are at least somewhat pathed out for the next few months. Certainly looks like there'll be plenty to talk about on the channel. I'll certainly be keeping up with any of the rules or models previews, and I'll look forward to reviewing the codexes on the channel once they drop.
If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular news and updates coming from Games Workshop, plus we've got a few juicy guard rumours to talk about later in the day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that down in the video description if you're interested. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.